Hello. Hey, everybody. Um, do we have any Shazam users in the audience today? OK, I'm looking for any non-users. Um, so if you, if you have Shazam, get it out. We're going we're gonna to Shazam a couple times during this presentation. In fact, we will start with a Shazam. If you can Shazam right now, talking does not help Shazam and see if this works. Let me know if anybody gets a result. You get it? So if, if you Shazam right now, um, you get my business card. And the way you get my business card is that we're, we're playing ultrasonic frequencies that we can't hear, but Shazam can hear. Um, and it's an example of the sort of technologies we're going to be using to connect people to the world around them um, through the Shazam platform. Um, so that's, a, that's an interesting one. And um, let me show you a couple other things about Shazam. So I'll, I'll give you a quick Shazam overview and then talk a little bit about the future. But long history in music, Shazam is over 12 years old, um, most famous for our music identification service. We've also moved into TV and are live ingesting 160 US TV channels and Shazam enabling TV advertisements around the world. We're now in most movie theaters in the US, which means you can Shazam the pre-show before the movie starts to get content, engage with the ads and things like that. We're in retail locations. We're in radio, and this is the, the content and advertising side of radio um, going beyond the music. We're in out of home, where we're shaz letting people Shazam to connect with smart screens and, uh, and billboards of various kinds. And we've announced in this year we'll be moving into visual Shazamming, using beacons to um, connect people with, with objects and places, and uh, also into live events. So I'll give you a couple examples of this. But first, the reason that we're able to do any of this is because of our scale. Shazam has been downloaded over 600 million times and has been used by over 100 million people in the last 30 days, um, which, is, which is very, very rare, rare scale. Um, People are Shazamming over 20 million times per day. And so that makes us a, a top 20 global app, which we think is really important in terms of providing this, this platform to connect people to the world around them. Um, we're also very proud that we are, generally speaking, the single or among the highest rated apps in the app stores around the world. Um, Consumers really, really love Shazam. They associate it with mobile and magic and music, and, and we take that really seriously. And internally, we talk about delivering magic every day and, and continuing to build on that trust and that love. And this is the chart of, of actual Shazams. And so it took us 10 years to do the first billion Shazams, and now we do a billion Shazams every uh, 45 days or so. And what's, what's powerful about this also is that every, every time someone Shazams, it's a really strong signal of, of interest and intent. And we now use that signal to target content, to target ads, and to customize the experience to make it as relevant as we can for our users, and also to give insights to our advertising and, and other partners in terms of you know, where people are when they're engaging with their, with their brands, um, time of day, all, all those sorts of insights. So a, a very power, powerful data signal in Shazam. The reason a lot of that's imp so important is that one of the only m numbers in the mobile world that's not growing is the number of apps people use. On average, people use 25 apps per month. And many of those apps are, are apps that someone will try and, and never use again. And so it is really, really difficult to become one of someone's top 25 apps. Um, and we think for most brands, retailers, and companies, you absolutely should have an app. It's great to have an app, but it's unrealistic to think that a large percentage of your customers and potential customers are going to download and use your app on a regular basis. And this is where we think we can help. 
Um, obviously, the time spent on apps continues to increase dramatically, and apps are about 90% of mobile time spent versus 10% for mobile web, and that just continues to sort of go uh, in the direction of, of being an all-app world. So let me talk a little bit about how we see the future. Um, one, we think these devices, you know, they only go in one direction. They're going to keep getting smarter. They're going to keep getting faster. They're going to have greater connectivity. We also think that you're not going to have to tell your device so much in the future. Your device is going to be much more situationally aware. You're not going to, it's going to feel, we'll laugh that we once had to type into our device to ask it a question and, and things like that. And so the, way that, the ways that, that Shazam's approaching that is we really believe in this always on world. And so we launched Auto Shazam, which is a switch on the app where we just stay on. And we're, in a, we're continuously doing Shazams, even when the phone is asleep. And so you come back with a playlist of, of whatever you encountered uh, when you had Auto Shazam on. Um, we're also working with, with Qualcomm on their next Snapdragon chip to be in the low power part of the chipset and working to find ways to make sure we're at the forefront of an always on mobile world where the phone is, is continuously on and aware and you're not having to tell it so many things. And so we, we really uh, were a first mover here. Um, we we're you know, proud of our technology that we can take a leap like this and handle the, the huge increase of, of query volumes that you get when you, uh, when you have things continuously on. Um, but we think this is a, a really important place for, for all of us to figure out as uh, mobile experience providers. Um, we also were uh, integrated into iOS 8 and Siri um, last year. And this is another example of, you know, Siri, Cortana, Google having, you know, voice search capabilities, having these sort of intelligent agents and apps like ours finding ways to integrate into those experiences um, and to be part of them. And so we were very excited about that and that's going great. Um, and now I thought I'd show you a couple examples of how we connect a brand to a mobile experience. And I think it, it'd be really hard to find a brand that's not trying to figure out how to connect with their consumers and potential consumers uh, on a mobile device, but it's hard. A lot of people have launched apps and pushed apps and not many people use them. A lot of people um, have tried all sorts of you know, creative things and have had trouble sustaining high engagement levels and really connecting with consumers in a mobile experience. So one of the things that, that we do is, is Shazam enable uh, TV spots. And so the concept is if the 30 second spot catches your attention, you can Shazam, it's just like clicking on the ad, and we deliver whatever that content is that comes next. And in this case, we'll take you inside the car, let you schedule a test drive, and things like that. So if you like, Shazam this one. So if you got that result, click on the um, interior 360 degree module and then you can move your phone around and we just took you from a 30 second spot catching your attention and now you're inside the car with, with one tap. Um, you know, no typing, no downloading and, and there you are experiencing that car at the next level um, after that initial attraction from, from the spot. And that same result is built using a tool that we use internally and now are able to offer our partners. And so that same result and experience we can now do for, for anything. So it can be for a, a radio spot, or as I'll show you in a second, it could be from a print ad um, or a retail environment and things like that. So we've also moved into retail. Uh, we Shazam enabled several thousand office depots and the Nike store in Sydney, Australia. And we did this by putting a watermark in the background music uh, in the stores. And so you go in the store, there's signage uh, encouraging you to Shazam to get the back to school or holiday specials or whatever the promotion of the particular retailer. And when you Shazam, we, we see the watermark, we know you're in this store and we deliver the experience that that store wants to deliver you. And it's meant to be easier than downloading an app or navigating to some URL or things like that. Um, and I should say this experience can also promote 
the app of that retailer, so it's not meant to displace their app, it's meant to be additive and to increase the engagement rate that they can get with their shoppers. We've also done out of home. So this is another one, um, and you can Shazam this. This is also uh, done ultrasonically. So these are smart screens in malls that um, don't play music. And so you can do this. And you get, um, and you go straight to the movie trailer, which is what, what movie marketers uh, would love you to, to experience. But before, you couldn't provide that on a, on a smart screen or a, a billboard. And now we can put that one tap away. All right, two more slides for you. We are very excited that this summer we will be launching visual Shazamming. And so this is the first time that we have used the camera. And we will enable you to Shazam QR codes, barcodes, and more importantly, we will partner with magazine publishers and people with packaged goods and let them uh, make that printed um, object Shazamable. And so you'll literally, will hold Shazam over the object, we'll do the recognition in, in less than a second, and we can provide whatever experience our partner wants to provide. And so that can be just like that, that experience I shared uh, for Jaguar. And so think about a uh, recipe in a food magazine and you hold Shazam over it and now the recipe is in your phone, you can share it, you can see more content about it. Um, think about you know promotions on uh, DVDs or toy packages or cereal box or anything where they would have wanted you to enter to win or get a discount or anything like that. Um, we, you know we're, we're trying to take as much friction out of that mobile engagement as we can. So we're uh, really excited about this and that will be live this summer. And the other one that we're working on is an integration with beacons. And so this is a uh, gimbal beacon. Um, gimbal is a, a Qualcomm company. And uh, if you talk to retailers and a lot of owners of, of venues around the world, there's a lot of interest in deploying beacons. And this beacon basically just um, it can be connected through Bluetooth and basically just sends a signal that tells an app like ours that it's next to this beacon. Um, and what we can do with that is by if Shazam can see beacons, now you can Shazam to be connected to whatever this beacon is trying to connect you to, and, and you can have that retail experience. And so this helps us Shazam enable an environment where there's no audio, no speakers, and if we wanted to you know, make this conference Shazam, we probably would do it through beacons. And so we're excited to be partnered with Gimbal on that, and we also think you know, to the theme of looking out a few years that, um, that beacons are gonna have real traction and, and be very, uh, very widely distributed. So I hope that gives you kind of a, a whirlwind tour through um, Shazam and how we're, um, you know, building on our, our strong foundation in music and trying to, to really be on the cutting edge of connecting mobile devices to, to a variety of, of experience in, in the world around us. And, um, you know, hopefully that, that helps you guys in terms of thinking about where the world's going. And with that, I will take any questions. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. Thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Can you speak a little bit more about the technology that you were mentioning in the beginning about the watermarks that are um, in the, like when we were able to get your business card? Yep. Like yeah, what so kind of frequency or whatever that is? Yeah, so, um, you know, watermark is, a, uh, is just putting a, an audio signal in a file that makes it where we're, there's audible watermarks where we could hear it, but we put it into the music or, or whatever audio so that we can't, but Shazam can hear it. And so the way Shazam normally works when you Shazam a song is we grab the tops of sound waves and then we go back to a database of over 30 million songs and we try to find an exact match for those sound waves. And so there's processing power required to, to find that match because the sound waves have um, interference through background noise and reverb and stuff like that. What's great about a watermark is a watermark is telling us I am this. You know, you don't have to do any processing. I am this ad, song, whatever. And so we love using watermarks. They can be audible or inaudible. The one I just played for you is, is an ultrasonic frequency. So it's over 20,000 hertz, which is outside of our human range of hearing. 
but within the range of uh, a lot of speakers can play those frequencies, and Shazam can hear those frequencies. And so that's just, a, for us, a, a way to show it, we don't have to have music playing to um, connect someone with something. And the first commercial deployment of that for us is, is in these malls where the smart screens don't want to be blasting music, but they do want people to be able to connect their device um, to them you know, from a distance, and uh, ultrasonic watermarks is, is how we do that. Yep. Barely. Sorry, it's not something that the customer will directly know. Yes. So I'm wondering what the next step is. Yeah, it's a great question. So, um, you know, most people know to Shazam Music, and so with music, it doesn't require any sort of, you know, uh, awareness. But for these other use cases, you're right. And so we have to educate consumers that these things can be Shazammed. And so we call that a, a call to action. So if you saw on the, on the TV ad I played, you know, our, our logo comes up in the corner and makes it clear that you can Shazam this and ideally what, what you get if you do. And it'll be the same thing in, um, in printed um, things, in retail environments. We need some sort of sign, some sort of key to, to make people aware and to hopefully over time build the habit to where people know to do that. But for, for the foreseeable future, that's one of the reasons that we do all this through partnerships is because we need someone to help us make a consumer aware and then to help us build that that value proposition that we deliver. So, you know, what's the point in Shazamming if what you get's not not worth it? And so that's why I work with the partner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, are you allowing developers uh, to use Chasam embedded in their apps, or uh, is there a way to use the technology or start your own app? Yeah, we, um, you know, we we've partnered with with. Apple, for example, to be integrated into Siri, um, but we, we generally we generally want consumers to download and use Shazam. Um, what we'll, what we will be doing is open up our platform to let people create Shazam results. So imagine that we would let you um, you have a beacon or you want to Shazam enable your shop, and so you could log on to Shazam, tell us the number of the beacon and use our template to build an experience and you just made your shop Shazamable or your you know, school play or whatever you want it to do. So I think we will over time move into a, a sort of um, open environment, self-serve kind of model, but we don't have any, any plans to let people use our, our core sort of algorithms, matching algorithms outside of Shazam. You know, so it's on the very, very rare exception of some big commercial partnership with someone like Apple. Hey, Rich. Owen Thomas from ReadWrite. Hey, Owen. Oh, sorry. Owen Thomas from ReadWrite. Uh, to follow up on an earlier question, we saw, we saw QCAT really fall flat on its face when it tried to get people to engage more with ads beyond just reading the ad in, in a magazine. What gives you confidence in a time when attention is the real scarcity that people will, will want to do this? Sure. That they'll want to spend more time with an ad beyond watching it, reading it, et cetera? Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, first you've got to remove as much friction as possible. So asking someone to download an app they've never heard of, asking someone to download anything, frankly, you're going to have a huge engagement drop. Asking someone to type. And so if you look at all these things, they, they, they frequently ask you to go to some long URL, download some app. Um, that's all friction. So we think first by taking all the friction out of the process, we dramatically increase our chances of driving that engagement. And so we're literally talking about open Shazam and push a button and, and this connection happens. And then the other side is what's the value prop to the consumer? And so if it's, you know, boring content about the ad, yeah, you're never going to Shazam that again. Um, but if it's a coupon that's now on your phone and you can take into the retailer and get 10% off, maybe that. If it's enter to win, you know, a lot of promotional um, tactics that are used by advertisers and brands around the world, um, things are also shareable. So you read an article in a magazine and you want to share it with somebody. Right now, you know, you're taking a picture of it or you're scanning it and emailing it. Now that's two taps away um, to be able to do that. And so it, it, it's those sort of value props. So taking out all the friction and then making the value prop as strong as we can, you know, we think will lead to interesting levels of engagement and, you know, over time, hopefully, very high levels of engagement. But 
you know, almost all of these content owners and brands are eager to figure out how to engage their audiences on mobile. And so we think this is a platform to, to you know, that has a, has a higher chance of succeeding than, than things that have been tried in the past. Question. Hey, thank you for taking my question. Um, could you disclose how many of the users come uh, from Latin America, uh, I mean from Mexico again, and uh, how are you monetizing them? Uh, I mean, uh, how much money are you making of, out of them? And the last question is uh, regarding uh, the agreement or the, the investment that Carlos Slim has in Shazam. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Carlos Slim uh, invest, uh, I, I guess, four million dollars in Shazam last year, I think so. So I, I want to know how the uh, relationship is going on with, with him and, and if he's uh, interested in investing more money in Shazam. Thank you. Sure. So uh, Latin America is a, a really exciting market for us. Um, Shazam only works on, on smartphones, and so um, smartphone penetration is still a little bit on the lower side in countries like Mexico, but, but rapidly increasing, and that's what, is what we're excited about. And so um, Carlos Slim, through his uh, America Mobile um, Corporation, invested in Shazam, as you mentioned, and we've partnered with them to distribute Shazam in Latin America. They also handle the monetization for us uh, and things like that. And so the, the partnership's going great. In fact, I was just there a couple weeks ago, and uh, we, are, we are, are very excited uh, about Latin America and, uh, and have a great partnership with America Mobile and the, and the Slums. We don't, we don't disclose, uh, I'll tell you, we have millions. <laughs> Hi again. Is this on? Is this, I don't know. Yep. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, me again. Um, how about the target group? Because what apps usually do right now is focus on smaller target groups. And it seemed that Shazam was always for music lovers and music interested people. Is that the average Jaguar driver? I didn't totally hear the questions. Is it well, what um, I just want because you showed the the ad that you're doing now with Yagua, the partnership. Is that the target group, the average Yagua driver? So, are, are you asking about our, our audience demographics? Yeah, or kind of. Because yeah. I was thinking it would be a little younger. Yeah, so, with um, with over a hundred million active users, are we end up looking a lot like the smartphone? Uh, demographics. We're, we're strongest in 18 to 34, but we, we really do, uh, at that sort of scale, you, you look very, very you know, similar to the, the smartphone overall demographics. But I will say, and this is, it's more anecdotal, but we feel like the uh, excitement and passion for Shazam increases as, as you get younger. And so um, it's really fun talking to, uh, to young people about Shazam, um, who, you know, it's one of the first apps, a lot of them get on their phone, they really, really love it, and that's, of course, a demographic that is notoriously difficult to, uh, to have like you, and so we're, uh, we're, we're very happy to be popular with them. Hello, thank, thank you for coming. Um, this is around data retention, or data privacy. Um, do you envision ever sharing the data or being a social sign-in like a Twitter where apps could sign in through Shazam and you would share behaviors based on permissions back to those brands? Yeah, uh, good question. So a couple things on data. I mean, one, our brand and our trust with our users is, you know, top of the list. And so anytime we think about data or privacy or, or any of these things, you know, we, we can't do anything to uh, compromise the, the, the great relationship and trust we have with our users and as shown in the App Store ratings and, and everything else. And so, so that comes first. Um, but finding ways to share our data and, and help you have our data has helped today it helps record labels see where um, songs are breaking and if consumers are connecting to their songs you know it helps brands understand um, when people are engaging with their ads and things like that so we, we are trying to uh, leverage this po very powerful data signal to provide insights to our partners and also to provide a better experience for our consumers um, and we do have you know, standard reporting that we provide when you advertise with Shazam that would give you uh, insights on how many times something was Shazammed, you know, where they came from geographically, time of day, and, and things like that. Um, none of it traced back to uh, particular individuals, of course. Um, and so over time, I could see us finding more ways to, uh, to expose this data and, and, and let it be used. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a, a path we'll, 
we'll, you know, we continue to explore, but we don't have any sort of specific near-term plans to open up an API or anything like that. More questions? Hi. Hey. Good presentation, thank you. Um, I'm using Shazam for quite a while now because I'm a music passionate and I have very bad memory. Yeah. Um, I'm, you, you, got sound, you sound like you're French. I am, indeed. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> our, our French uh, users are among our most passionate. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, you got me confused with the image recognition. Um, I understand the advertising, mm -hmm. like listening to music and getting content. Mm -hmm. Like the case study about the Jaguar is very interesting. Mm -hmm. But image recognition, what is the link with music? And aren't you afraid to lose people like me that will be pissed um, to basically not um, get what I want, <laughs> which sure. is music information? It's a great question. So um, the first thing is we know that most of our users use Shazam to identify music. And I am proud to tell you that we have not taken our eye off that ball at all. In fact, the app has never been faster, never been more accurate. We have a lot of R&D going into continuing to increase the accuracy and speed. And we are committed to always being the best in the world at music identification, period. So we will, we will, we will not let you down on that. We also know that it could be that when you uh, are in a retail environment, that what you really wanted was the music, not the offers. So what we'll do is show you the music and then the offers. And so we, we are not gonna let you down on that. But we've, we, so it's, to us, we're adding to the experience. We've now got content in the app based on what you Shazam. So if you go to the home screen and scroll, that's a content feed that's based on the artist that you've sh shown us that you are, are passionate about. And so this is all meant to be music and beyond without taking our eye for a second off of being you know, the best in the world at, at music identification. Keep the faith. What's that? Yeah, I said I don't really agree, actually, because I got this experience last week in my car listening to a radio spot asking me to Shazam the, the song. Okay. Um, I knew it was advertising, but I did it anyway. Uh -huh. And I, what I received was only the advertising, yeah. nothing about the, the music I was listening, nothing about the compositor, nothing about um, what was behind the advertising. Got and it. this is where you lost me, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, that's not what's intended to happen. Um, so I, I won't say that never happens. And a lot of these are, are new areas for us and new formats, and we're still trying to figure out how to get that right. But our 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 strategy is to always show you the music. Um, we will, we will. Hi, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, how other speakers in, in this or other conferences? How can they uh, make uh, like you did uh, at the beginning. Uh, how an ultrasonic business card? Yes. Can I make it by, my, for, by myself or my, for me? Not yet. Um, but that's one of the things as we, as we go towards a, a self-serve uh, model that you could make yourself Shazamable. Um, and so uh, for the moment, that's, 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 that's a trick only I get to use. <laughs> okay. W will, be some, uh, will it be some pro subscription to get those, subs uh, those sound bites? Sorry? Uh, will it be commercially uh, later, let's say, uh, some pro subscription and I can make it by myself as well? Potentially, potentially. Yeah, we, um, if you think about, you know, historically Shazam had to build Shazam results. Now we've got a set of partners that can build Shazam results and, and we want to keep expanding that universe. And so um, we would love it if you could log on to Shazam and, you know, make whatever you want to make example including something like uh, a business card so um, headed in that direction hey um, all of the contents ads um, but do you see yourself actually getting into like long-form content I mean advice one earlier on so which is Ambia a, a platform where you'd have uh, non advertising content Sure, sure. So we, um, today we, we, we have content around music. And so when you Shazam an artist, we assume that you uh, are a fan of that artist. And the content feed that's now on our home screen is sending you content based on that signal. And so if an artist that you've Shazam has a new video, we'll put it in your content feed. If they're coming, you know, uh, if they have a new track, new things like that, 
or if we've partnered with the artist or label to have special content or a behind the scenes or an interview, we'll push that content to you in that content feed. Um, you can also see what your friends have Shazammed if you connect through Facebook. We also have charts and things like that. I don't think we'll ever get into um, being a major content creator ourselves. I think we view ourselves as more um, an aggregator of content because our, our primary, the reason that we can create, we think a compelling content feed is because of our unique signal of you've told us not just what kind of music you like, you've told us these are the artists that, you know, cause me to take out my phone and push a button and I, I really love these artists. And that's a unique signal we have. And so we're trying to find all the content relevant to that and then to deliver that based on the signal. We're, we really are a, a, a technology company at heart uh, as opposed to sort of a content creation as our uh, core competency. Hello. Next question over here, front row. Hi, I'm here. Hello. Okay, uh, I'm German, I'm a dog lover, and I was just concerned about, you know, ultrasonic beacons. Doesn't it drive dogs crazy? Or are they dog friendly, which would be good? It, it does not. It does not. It's, uh, it's, it's, at, it's at frequencies that uh, cause no harm to animals. Great, thank you. I thought you were going to ask me if we could make it where you could Shazam and we would tell you what kind of dog it was. That's harder. There's a question here. Is it last question? No more questions? One more question. Okay. Um, I wondered if you could talk any more briefly about the rollout of the print ad sort of visual recognition and specifically are you working with any publishers uh, to roll that out? Yeah, so we are uh, actively talking to publishers and brands about um, being part of, of, the, of this launch and so uh, nothing to announce on that yet but um, the way we do it is there's actually encoding on that page that we can't see but that Shazam can see. And so we need them to add that to those pages and help us build that experience. But we're, we're looking for, uh, we're looking, we're you know, hoping to bring on a lot of publishers and a lot of big brands to, um, to get that rolling. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap. Thank you, thank you so much.